All right, today's lesson is lesson number 97. We're going to be talking about coordinate plane triangles. So um, kind of like the background here, a coordinate plane is just when you have um, an X and a Y. Sorry, the other way, X and Y. Um, so this is our coordinate axes and the coordinate plane. So you might have a triangle like this or like this. We're going to just kind of talk about what we can do with triangles in the coordinate plane. Okay, so what I had students do to start out was just think about what we've already learned this week. And using those skills, I wanted them to figure out how to find the perimeter of a triangle with these as the vertices. Okay, the first thing that they should have realized that they needed to do was plot these points. So the points are here, and then sketch the lines for the sides of the triangle. Okay, so this is the triangle that we're working with. In order to find the perimeter, you need to add up the lengths of the sides. Okay, so they should realize they need to find the length of each side. To do that, they could use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, for example, if they look at this length here, they could create this right triangle and use this as A, B, and then solve for C um, using the Pythagorean theorem. They would have to do that three times, okay, for this side as well, and then for this final side. Okay, the way that I chose to walk through it and that way that a lot of students solve this um, is using the distance formula. So we know that the distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And we can use this, um, for instance, if we look at this blue segment right here, I could find the length of this segment or the distance between these two points. Okay. Um, again just by using these points in the distance formula. Okay, so I want to look at uh, this segment, the endpoints are negative 3, 5 and 1, 1. So that's what I'm going to use as my x1, y1 and x2, y2. Okay, so plugging this in, I have x2 is 1, um, so it looks like I have 1 minus negative 3 squared plus 1 minus 5 squared Okay, 1 minus a negative 3 is like 1 plus 3, so that's going to give me 4 squared, and then 1 minus 5 would give me negative 4, so I have negative 4 squared. Okay, 4 squared is 16, and negative 4 squared is also 16, so I get square root of 32, which um, I know that 16 is a perfect square that's in there, so I can factor that out. I write it as 16 times 2. And then 16 is 4 squared. Since this is squared, it gets to break out of the square root. And I get 4 rad 2 is my final answer. Okay. So the length of that first side would be 4 rad 2. Okay, looking over at the side that's shown here in purple now. Um, that side, I want to find the distance between those two points. So I use the points negative 3, 5 again, and then negative 2, negative 2 is the second point. Okay, plugging these into the distance formula, I have x2 minus x1, so negative 2 minus negative 3 squared, plus y2 minus y1, so negative 2 minus 5 squared. Okay, and solving that, negative 2 minus 3, this uh, minus a negative 3, excuse me, gives me negative 2 plus 3. So that's going to be the square root of 1 squared. Negative 2 minus 5 gives me a negative 7. So I have 1 squared plus negative 7 squared. That gives me 1 plus 49, which equals the square root of 50. Okay, I can break that down to 25 times 2. That's going to be 5 rad 2, right? Because this 25 is a perfect square. It's just 5 squared, so that comes out as a 5. Okay, so I get 5 rad 2 as this purple segment. Okay, now I have two of the three sides. I'm one side away from having the perimeter. So I just need to do this last distance. I use the points negative 2, 2, and 1, 1, because those are the end points here, right? Here and here. I plug these into the distance formula, so I have x2 minus x1, switch colors here, um, x2 minus x1 would be 1 minus negative 2, so 1 minus negative 2 squared, 
plus, and then y2 is 1, y minus y1, so I have 1 minus negative 2 again. So what minus negative 2 squared. That gives me 3 squared plus 3 squared, which equals the square root of 18. Okay, this is 9 plus 9. Okay, I know that I can rewrite 18 as the square root of 9 times 2. I do that because 9 is a perfect square, right? It's just 3 squared, so the 3 can come out. And I get 3 rad 2. Okay, so now I have all three sides. I can find the perimeter now. Okay, the perimeter is what we get when we add these three sides together. Now, careful when you're adding things with a square root, you almost want to think of this as like an x. Okay, it's just a thing. So we have 3x plus 4x. Oh, sorry about that. 3x plus 4x. Mm. All right, sorry. So if we think of this as 3x plus 4x plus 5x, we would know to write that as, uh, we know that we can't really combine the, the x's. We don't make it like x squared or anything. We just add the number part. So this is 3 plus 4 plus 5, which would be 12. And then rad 2, I just put next to it. So this is 12 rad 2. Okay. If you were to work this out on your calculator, you get about 16.97. Okay, and um, if these were different, so let's say, for example, we found that this was 3 red, I don't know, maybe 3 red 3. Okay, I can't add these together anymore, so my perimeter, I would have to write it separately. So, like, 4 red 2 plus 3 red 3, and that would be it. I wouldn't be able to go any farther. Okay, so uh, back to what we actually do have, though, is this triangle. Um, I found the perimeter, and now I want to know if this is a right triangle. So some of the students in class were saying, oh, it's a right triangle. Um, but how do we know that, right? It kind of looks like it. It looks like I want to say this is a right angle, but I'm not convinced. I need it to be proved to me. And we can do that using the Pythagorean theorem. So I want to see, okay, does this side squared plus this side squared give me this third side squared, right? Does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? To check that, I need to square all of the sides. So I have 3 rad 2 squared. To square something like this, you have to square each piece. Okay, these cancel out, so I'm just left with the 2 there, so I get 3 squared is 9, and then the square root of 2 squared is just 2. Okay, and these are being multiplied, okay? So I get 9 times 2, um, which is going to equal 18. So that's my first side squared, so I have a squared equals 18. Kind of out of space here, um, I guess I could just write out over this, so we know this already. Okay, so cleared out a little bit of space here. Um, if you need what was shown here, just go back in the video, okay? Um, but let's look again, trying to prove that this is a right triangle. I'm going to look at a squared plus b squared and see if it's equal to c squared, okay? So this is kind of like um, a question here. I'm seeing if this is true. Okay, so we already found a squared was equal to 18. Um, now I could look at b squared or the other leg. Um, that would ends up being 32. Okay, let me back this up a little bit. So um, 3 rad 2 squared gives me 18. 4 rad 2 squared is going to give me 32. So now I'm adding those, and I want to know uh, what this equals. Okay, and I see that 18 plus 32 is equal to 50. So now I want to know, okay, is that what c squared is? Is this equal? So I'll check um, 5 rad 2 if I square that. I have to square each piece, right? So I get 25 times 2, which does equal 50. So yes, this equals 50. So it's good. So yes, this is in fact a right triangle. And I can uh, mark it this way, right? I can mark off the right angle now because now I have proven that yes, Pythagorean's theorem holds. So this must be a right triangle. 
All right. Um, so to kind of officially look at the steps that we did to do to um, find the perimeter, we plotted the three vertices, then sketched the sides. Then we used the distance formula, which is this, um, with the endpoints. So the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 were the endpoints of a side of the triangle. Okay, so these endpoints here. Okay, um, we solved for d for each side. And then we added the side lengths in order to find the perimeter. Okay, and again, you can use your calculator for this part to get a decimal approximation um, because a lot of the times you'll have like different square roots that you can't combine. Okay, we also asked, is there a way that we could determine if this is a right triangle? And we discovered, yes, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. So to check if it's a right triangle, you want to see is a squared plus b squared equal to c squared? And then if it's equal, then yes, it's a right triangle. If it's not equal, then no, it's not a right triangle. Okay, so maybe make a note of this. Um, this was the second example, so I'll just kind of go through this quickly. Um, if you want to kind of test yourself, go ahead and pause here and try to do the problem. And then you can check your work. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot these points. So I'm not really focusing on the right angle part, right triangle part yet. I'm just looking for... Um, looking to find the distance of each side. Um, I'm writing the distance formula here, so x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I'm going to use these endpoints, so this point here is negative 6, 0, this point here is negative 1, 4. Okay, and I plug these into the distance formula, so I have negative 1 minus negative 6 squared plus 4 minus 0 squared negative 1 minus negative 6 uh, becomes negative 1 plus 6 so that's going to be positive 5 and then 4 minus 0 is just 4 so I have 5 squared plus 4 squared which is 25 plus 16 adding those gives me 41 so um, I can't simplify that square root so my answer for this side length is just the square root of 41 looking at this next one that's in purple the endpoints there are negative 2, negative 2, and 1, 4. doesn't matter which order you put these in as well, okay? If you call um, this your first point and this your second point, you'll still get the same answer, okay? So um, the way I have the points here, though, um, this would be my x2. So I have x2 minus x1, so negative 1 minus negative 2. Then y2 minus y1 is 4 minus negative 2. Okay, 1 minus negative 2 becomes 1 plus 2, so that's going to be a positive 1. 4 minus negative 2 becomes 4 plus 2, so that's 6. 1 squared is 1, and 6 squared is 36. That gives me d equals the square root of 37 as my final answer for that length. All right, then for our last side that's in red, I use the endpoints there, which are negative 6, 0, and negative 2, negative 2. Um, plugging into the distance formula again, I get this. Negative 2 minus a negative 6 is like negative 2 plus 6, so that's going to be positive 4. I have 4 squared plus negative 2 squared. That gives me 16 plus 4, so I have a square root of 20, which is just 4 times 5 inside the square root. The 4 comes out um, as a 2 because it's just 2 squared. So my final side length here would be 2 rad 5. Okay, you can see with this example that finding the perimeter would be more difficult. We can't add any of these together. Um, so in this form, I would just be able to write 2 rad 5 plus rad 37 plus rad 41. That's the best I can do because I can't combine, um, can't combine the square roots here, okay? Um, on your calculator, though, you could find this. Oh, sorry about that. Um, on your calculator, you could plug these in and then find the answer, okay? Um, we could also determine if this is a right triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, but this kind of looks like it's really not a right angle anywhere. Um, maybe this one I would think is maybe a right angle, so maybe I would want to check that. Um, and so you would use these as the legs and then this as the hypotenuse in that case. All right, but um, we're going to go ahead and end the lesson here. So work on the homework problems that um, 
relate to these. Okay, there's only two like actual problems. So there's two sets of vertices. You have to graph it, uh, find the side lengths, find a decimal approximation of the perimeter, and then determine if it's a right triangle or not. Um, but there's only two of those. So really try to do your best and do those correctly uh, to help you review all these concepts for next week's quiz. Okay, and have a good weekend. I will see you on Tuesday.